A key serves as a primary unique identifier for each entity instance. When using a relational database, this maps to the concept of your primary key. You can also configure a unique identifier that is not the primary key. But in this lecture, we're going to look at the different instances of associating a primary key for our relational databases associated with our entities. As you can see, that's a naming convention for Entity Framework Core that a property with the type ID at the end of it will take on the primary key, even if you don't name it specifically as the primary key. As you can see in the person class right here, we have person ID to associate our primary key. So once it sees the ID at the end of the type, it's going to associate this as the primary key. Also with our address class, as you can see right here, this entity has address ID, which is going to associate with our primary key. And also on the car class, you see car ID. But what we can do is we don't have to name it ID. We can come over here and instead we can put it at the top and give it the data annotation to associate what the key is. So right here I can put key. And as you can see right here, we're going to have to import using system component model dot data annotations. And that's going to associate this as the primary key. And instead of having the ID there, I can say person key. And this is going to be when I generate my model again, the primary key. So we can use data annotations to associate what key value is our primary key. Another way we can do this is we can go to our Fluent API and associate in the on model creating method right here. We can come in here and take the parameter model builder. So what entity are we looking at? We're looking at the person entity and we're associating the person key right there. So we're going to come over here. We want to say entity and the entity is going to be person. Then we're going to put right here the parentheses dot has key. And then we're going to do a little lambda expression right here. We're going to say x, x dot. And what do we want to associate that as? Person key. So instead, if we didn't want to use the data annotations right here, we could take off the data annotation right there. And then we can associate right here on the on model creating to associate what is our primary key. Another way we can do this, we can also associate for a single instance. So what I'm going to put right here in comments, single primary key. We can also have multiple primary keys, a composite key in relational databases associated with our entity. So we can say more than one. And that's going to be composite. So right there, this is going to be our composite key. We can do right here, we can just copy this just to save a little time. So right here, we can come in here and we can say in the composite, we can say new. Put this right here. And then we can put a comma. And we can say x dot. And we can have, let's say, instead of just person key, we want to have first name. So this is a way to implement a composite key to associate with our entity data model. So you can do this with the Fluent API, or you can implement this directly on your entity with the key to associate with that. So now that we've associated the key right here, and we also have the address associated there and the cars, this is how you generate the primary key to associate with your different en entities. So in this case, we're going to have this save. We're not going to actually implement the script, but this is how you would implement primary keys to associate whether it's a single or it's a composite key inside of your application. You can associate these items however you want to implement it within your database migration associated here. So this is how you can implement it via the data annotations, or you can implement it with the Fluent API to associate with a single primary key or a composite key.